It's not easy to build a telecom network from scratch, but that is exactly what Light Squared wants to do, build the only national 4G network in the United States. The company could be one step closer to making that happen. Bloomberg is reporting Light Squared is on the verge of closing a $20 billion deal with Sprint, but such an ambitious project comes with sizable hurdles. One hurdle was addressed this week by a government official who said in testing, the Light Squared network disrupted GM's OnStar service and GPS systems used by the Defense Department. And then there's the billionaire part of this story. Light Squared is backed by hedge fund player Phil Falcone, some of Falcone's investors who have been requesting their money back from his fund have been paid out in private shares of Light Squared. And finally, there's the man who runs Light Squared, Sanjeev Ahuja. He's no stranger to establishing broadband communication services. He founded two companies which established affordable wireless in Pakistan, Bangladesh, and 12 African countries. And he joins us now from New York. Welcome to Bloomberg West, Sanjeev. And obviously the word that comes up when people talk about your plan so much is ambitious. What do you say to the critics out there? John, thank you very much. It's good to be here. You know, Light Squared is trying to build the nation's first wholesale-only wireless broadband network. Complemented with our satellite support, this is the first time American consumers, coast to coast, including Alaska and Hawaii, can be connected, either through a voice connection or through an email, anywhere, whether you are in Yellowstone National Park Grand Canyon or Appalachian Trail. It is an opportunity that really demands innovative thinking, creative business models like ours, which is a wholesale only, horizontal business model, something this industry has not seen anywhere else in the world. And yet there are those who question whether this can become a reality. I highlighted off the top those concerns about the disruptions to GPS signals. How do you react to those comments from that government official this week on, on, on the testing? John, our mandate from FCC was is to cover 260 million people by the end of 2015. We think we will be able to get it done 12 to 18 months ahead of that schedule. So we are moving very rapidly towards building this network. However, we have to work with the folks like the GPS community to make sure that we can live in an optimal way with other user of, users of the spectrum that live in close by spectrum. Now we and, have and, and how, do you, how do you resolve that specifically? How will you resolve this concern that was addressed this week? Uh, John, we have been working with GPS community since 2003. FCC defines the rules that defines what spectrum is used and how. Ours as well as GPS's. Since we are close to one another, GPS users tend to look into our spectrum's usage. Now, as FCC has stated, and we have stated, that we are working very closely with them. We are about to complete the testing and present a report next week to the FCC. We expect that as a follow-on to that, Wonderful engineers in this country will be able to figure out a way so that GPS community, GPS devices live within the spectrum that has been allocated to us while we can build our products and provide service to our customers within the spectrum that has been allocated to us. So this doesn't change your time timeline for getting to commercial service that well, you're saying? We are moving very aggressively towards building the network. However, the launch of the network, we want to ensure that it is done when we have really worked with the GPS community and defined the rules that the GPS community will live by and the rules that we will live by so that we can ensure that our customers, because most of our customers, if not all of them, are users of GPS itself. GPS is a very critical part of our own network in designing and building it. So we are absolutely confident we'll build a solution that works with them. But the benefit of this, starting next year to the American consumer, is a network and a service at the price point this country has never seen before. Sanjeev, I, I want to talk about this expected deal with Sprint, of course. Bloomberg has been reporting on it. What can you tell us about it? John, the way our business model works, 
we are working with all the national operators, all the wireless operators. We are also working with wireline operators. As you know, we have announced a relationship with Best Buy. We are working with other retailers as well. More importantly, we are working with the rural providers, public safety communities, to take our service and bring it to their customers. But we are also working in a deeper relationship with some of the operators. And we have had conversations with Sprint. But if we have something to announce, we will be back here. How far away might you be from an announcement with Sprint? Well, we are working at different, as I said, we are working with many, many people in this industry. We have had different level of discussions with different players in this industry. But it's why just the wireless operators? We are also working, as I stated, with the wireline guys. But very importantly, John, we are working with people right where you are in Silicon Valley. We are building a sandbox where any entrepreneur, a two-person shop or the largest enterprise in this country can come into our sandbox, test their device with our network, buy our service from us, and go deliver it to the end consumer. So we had several conversations with several players in this industry, and we keep announcing them as the relationships mature. Very quickly, Sanjeev, we mentioned your company's connection to the billionaire Phil Falcone. As some of the investors in his hedge fund get their money back, uh, they have received some small ownership stake in Light Squared. How does that affect your business going forward? John, Phil uh, Falcone's Harbinger Capital is a very large shareholder in Light Squared. We have several other institutional shareholders in Light Squared. Phil is a wonderful partner to work with. I've had a great relationship for the last two years as a business partner to work with him. But Light Squared as an operating business, Phil Falcone is not on the board of it. I am the chairman of the company. I'm the person responsible for operations. And what happens to Harbinger Capital right. or Phil Falcone's fund has no impact on the operations of this company. All right. Well, Sanjeev, thanks for sharing uh, the perspective with us, Sanjeev Ahuja of Light Squared.